Good morning. I'd like to start our service out with this morning with two hymns. The first one is 127, We Gather Together. The second one is 206, Beneath the Cross of Jesus. Welcome this morning in the name of the Lord. This is the fourth Sunday of Lent. Lent is a time of preparation, a time when we move toward the crucifixion and the resurrection of Christ, a time to move intently toward God, 
ridding ourselves of the distance and the distractions we have built into our relationships. Lent is when we are called to respond with a radical generosity and spirit, spiritual discipline to God's covenants that we may draw near to the one we seek. Our opening hymn this morning will be 274, God, We Gather as Your People.
Would you bow with me for the invocation? Father, we come to you this morning thanking you for all the blessings that you have given us. May your spirit be with us this morning as we review the story of Nicodemus. In Jesus' name, amen. Now, I still I have three names on the prayer of concern list. Amy Stanley, Kurt Cook, and Shirley Trulove. Would you bow with me for the prayer? Heavenly Father, we come to you with names of Amy Stanley, Kurt Cook, and Shirley Trulove this morning. You know far better than we do just what their needs are. May you be with each one of them and meet their needs at this time. Also, Lord, be with their families at this time. In Jesus' name, amen. Our next hymn this morning is 353, Let Your Heart Be Broken. Would you bow with me for the prayer for peace? Loving parent, as we continue our Lenten journey, we thank you for Jesus who came among us. He provides for us a light, guide and example of how we should strive to live our lives. Just as he shone light on injustice and oppression, help us to do the same. When we become scared, help us to see the truth in this situation so that we may continue your work. Help us be your light for others in the darkness. In Jesus' name, amen. Our next hymn is 253, What a Friend We Have in Jesus.
This week's scripture text comes from John chapter 3 verses 14 through 17. And our theme for this morning is accept the light of the world. This is where Nicodemus, a Pharisee, came to Jesus and asked about God's great love. And in verse 17 of this text is the most recognized verse in the Bible. For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten Son, that whosoever believes on him should not perish but have eternal life. But now I will read the whole scripture. Just as Moses lifted up the snake in the wilderness, so the Son of Man must be lifted up, that everyone who believes may have eternal life in him. For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten Son, that whoever believes in him shall not perish, but have eternal life. For God did not send his Son into the world to condemn the world, but to save the world. Whoever believes in him is not condemned, but whoever does not believe stands condemned already, because they have not believed in the name of God's one and only Son. This is the verdict. Light has come into the world, but people loved darkness instead of light because their deeds were evil. Everyone who does evil hates the light and will not come into the light for fear that their deeds will be exposed. But whoever lives by truth comes into the light so that it may be plainly that they have done as been done in the sight of God. Jesus' conversation with a learned Pharisee named Nicodemus leads to this explanation of God's great love. Jesus reminds Nicodemus of the story in Numbers chapter 21 where the fiery snakes killing Israelites and Moses prayed for the people. God told him to build a bronze snake, attach it to a pole, and lift it up to protect the people's lives and eventually grant salvation. John makes a critical connection here to Jesus. Just as Moses lifted up the bronze serpent, so must the Son of Man be lifted on the cross for salvation and eternal life for the for of believers. To carry out his mission, Jesus must, through divine need, choose death on, on the cross to serve people. Jesus tells Nicodemus the reason for his death was so that everyone who believes in him may not perish but have eternal life. The Incarnation is the basis of John's theology. Incarnation means that through Jesus the Word became flesh and lived among us. To be saved, people must simply believe in God and Jesus Christ. Believing or trusting in God leads to eternal life. Nicodemus was connected with the Pharisees. From what we know about the Pharisees is that their motives were not always pure. Like Nicodemus, they were confronted with a decision that demands us to choose harmony or oppression with that order. Now that Nicodemus, a Pharisee, had came into contact with Jesus, who is the light and the life of men, he had a choice to make. Now as we have come in contact with Jesus, and we know is the light and life of men, we have a choice to make. Do we get amnesia about God as has delivered us? Jesus mentioned being lifted up four times in the Gospel of John. Once in chapter 3, 13, chapter 8, 28, chapter 12, verses 32 and 34. When Jesus spoke to Nicodemus about how Moses lifted up the bronze snake on a pole, he was reminding Nicodemus about how the children of Israel angered the Lord because they complained even after they had been delivered. 
they had spiritual amnesia because they complained about the lack of food and the lack of water and accused Moses, who was God's chosen leader, of leading them into the desert to starve them to death. For John believed in God and Jesus means to give one's unconditional trust and faith to God and to Jesus. Doing this ensures a better life for the believer because in John 10.10, 10, Jesus says, I came that they may have life and have it more abundantly. The quality of life for the believer is higher and more satisfying because God unconditionally loves the world and loves all people in the world. The good, the bad, the unjust, and the unjust, the lovable, and the unlovable. Unconditional love is God's nature of ex as expressed in Jesus' life of living all people, of loving all people. Jesus' life revealed God's unmerited grace and generosity. Not only does God love everyone, but God sent his son as a generous gift for all of us. By giving the son, God wishes the word might be saved through him. God's love in Jesus Christ is active, resurrect, restorative, and continues to be active in the lives of believers. God's love through Jesus brings salvation rather than judgment and condemnation. John makes it clear that salvation comes from faith or believing. Those who believe are not condemned. However, those who don't believe are condemned already. For those who don't believe or trust in God and Jesus, their lives are more difficult because they don't have Christ's peace to go with them during difficult times as well as good times. People who live in a permanent state of disbelief in God and Jesus feel judgment or live in darkness rather than light. John is referring to the self-imposed judgment or darkness that people choose when they don't believe. To choose darkness rather than light is to exit outside God's love, which is freely offered. Those who choose to believe in the truth of Jesus' light lives like Jesus, so that it may be clearly seen that their deeds have been done in God. Believers' lives generously share the invitation, ministers, and sacraments through which people can endure the living Christ who heals and reconciles through the redemptive relationships in sacred community. Do we exalt the cross of Jesus Christ in our lives and our witness? Scholars say that this lifting up points to a double meaning. The meaning is not just that the emblem was lifted up physically, but also the emblem of Jesus' exaltation. It has been said that Lent is a spring training for Christians and that Easter is opening day. If we are the Easter people, and we are, do we raise our voices, exalting Jesus as Lord of our lives in all of our choices? Do we lift high the cross of Jesus, remembering its triumphant sign? Do we remember that our witness in lifestyle, word, and deed effect for better or worse, those who are watching us. How well, how well do we remember that our future depends on this? Now our closing hymn this morning is 627, God forgave my sins in Jesus' name.
like God is sending forth this morning. Let us rejoice. God so loved the world. May God, our Creator, send you forth into the world refreshed with new energy. May Christ, the light, shed light on your darkest moments. And may the Holy Spirit of unwavering love guide you until we worship again in this day and forever. Amen. Oh,